Let's learn about contact and non-contact forces. Remember from video one that a force is also a vector quantity. So that means it's got size and direction. In other words, if you push somebody with a force of 100 newtons, you'd say 100 newtons to the right, or you pulled with 200 newtons to the left. The other thing about forces, not a lot of people seem to understand this idea, is that forces are always in interaction between two objects. Okay, so there's two objects and they exert equal and opposite forces on each other. So let's just do a couple of examples of that. You kick a football, you put a force on the football, it puts an equal and opposite force on you. The earth is pulling you down with a force which is your weight. You are pulling the earth upwards with an equal and opposite force. But because you're much lighter, you accelerate downwards, the earth doesn't accelerate upwards. You're sitting on a seat, you put a force on the seat, the seat puts a force on you. There's two types of force that we need to know about. There's contact forces and non-contact forces. Contact forces, the two objects have to be physically touching. Non-contact forces, obviously the forces can exert between those two objects without physical contact. We just need to know a couple of examples of each. You need to know four contact forces. So the first one being friction. When two objects slide past each other, they exert equal and opposite forces on them. So friction, it's basically just a force which tries to slow down motion, tries to stop motion. Next one, the normal contact force. The normal contact force is when you've got two solid objects and they push against each other. So you sitting on the ground, this tripod sat on the table, the object underneath pushes back up the floor when you stand on it. There's a normal contact force and that's pushing you up so you don't fall through the floor. Then you've got air resistance. So air resistance is when an object tries to move through the air. Okay, those air particles get in the way and slow it down. They try to pull it back. So some, another way of describing this is a drag force. So drag forces are exerted whenever an object tries to move through a fluid. A fluid being a liquid or a gas because they flow around. So drag forces are exerted on objects moving through fluids. The next contact force is tension. So if for example you've got something and you try to pull it apart, there's a tension force trying to hold that together. Okay, so tension force obviously has to be in contact non-contact forces the obvious one being gravity if you get something and then drop it that will fall without it having to touch the earth it will fall down right we're going to be talking about the electrostatic force now and we're going to use the van der graaff generator if i put my hand on the van der graaff this will charge me up the same charge as the van der graaff that charge will come onto me it will come onto these these will all be the same charge as each other and that means that as each one of these becomes repelled, it's going to have more force upwards from the electrostatic force than the weight acting downwards. An interesting thing about that, the whole Earth is pulling this down. Just a little bit of charge I'm going to have from this Van der Graaff generator onto here is going to be enough to overcome the entire gravitational pull of the Earth on here. Okay, let's see this magic trick in action. That is physics magic, electrostatic force. There's something else cool you can do with a Van der Graaff generator. This Bunsen burner is at zero volts. I'm at a high voltage, so I've got a lot of charge on me. There's a high potential difference between those two objects. So that should be enough of a potential difference to drive a current through the air, which is normally an insulator. And hopefully this gas tap is on, put it on the yellow flame, we should hopefully be able to send the current through there and ignite the gas. Yes, only a little bit of pain. It's all worth it. More physics magic.
And then the other one being magnetism. Two magnets don't need to touch in order to feel that force. If you remember from maybe year seven, year eight, like poles repel and unlikes attract. That's where that phrase opposites attract comes from. Let's look at some examples. So remember, in every situation you could be presented with, you need to be able to identify the forces acting, and then you just have to remember, okay, each force is equal and opposite, and then they don't cancel out because they're on different objects. Let's look now at the normal contact force. When you sit down on your chair, you actually put a force down on your chair. The particles within the chair push up with an equal and opposite force. We can see that modeled here. The atoms represented by these uh, polystyrene balls and the bonds represented by these springs. So you push down, they push back up with an equal and opposite force. And we call that force on a solid, the normal contact force. So, for example, we're looking at friction in a bit more detail. Um, have you ever thought maybe about how you manage to walk forwards? So if we have a quick look at that. When you're walking forwards, if you stand up now and you try to actually walk forwards, so what's going to happen is you need to feel which way are you pushing on the ground in order to go forwards. So as you try to go forwards, you should be able to feel that you're pushing backwards on the ground, okay, and as you push backwards on the ground, the ground pushes with an equal and opposite force on you forwards. Okay, so again, it's a force, it's two objects interacting, you and the ground, it's equal and opposite forces, you push backwards on the ground, the ground pushes forwards on you. Now, if there wasn't any friction, your foot would just slide straight over the ground, again, you wouldn't actually get anywhere. The same thing happens with like a, a car wheel. So the car tire spins, as it spins, it exerts a force backwards on the road. The road pushes forwards on the wheel, and so it goes forward. Now, if you just wheel spin, if there's ice or something like that acting on the road, the car would, the tire would spin. It wouldn't exert any force on the ground, so there wouldn't be any force going forwards on the ground. Okay? And remember, friction just arises just because of slight irregularities in the in the surface so if they were perfectly smooth they would just slide straight over each other but when you look at microscopic level at surfaces they're rough so as they try to slide past each other they grip okay and that sort of grip is called the frictional force they exert equal and opposite forces on each other you should know now that there are contact forces there's non-contact forces you know the definition of those examples of each and then be able to identify the forces acting in any situation they give you so identify the force, then there'll be an equal and opposite force from the other object acting on that one of an equal magnitude in the opposite direction. And we'll see you in the next video.